Welcome to part two of our off-grid power system install. Now since the last video, I've cracked on and I've boarded the inside of this out and I've got some holes cut, ready to put cables through. And that's going to be for the generator cable in, solar power cable in, and then a mains power cable out. Now I've also started roughing in the trench for the cable to go in. We're only going like a foot deep. It doesn't need to be massive. And yeah, I'm just going to bring it out right in the centre of the back of this. Right by the hole, so we can run the cables behind the cladding on this back edge and keep it all looking very nice and neat. And this is the cable we're going to be using. It's a 10mm squared armoured cable, so it's got two layers of sort of metal sheathing around four cores in the middle. And we're going to be using two of the cores to run one string on and then the other two to run the other string on. So it'll work out pretty nicely and we'll get all our solar straight into the shed, down this one cable. So I've just laid the cable in here for you to see how it's going to roughly go. As you can see, I need to clean the bottom out all the way along here, as I've just literally roughed it out, chopped out some chunks, put it to one side, and we've got 120 odd metres of this to go, down to where we're going to be putting the solar array. So we're getting there, we're about a third of the way done. As you can see, we've got all past the little polytunnel done here. Only roughed in, as I say, I've got to come along it and just scoop out the last bit of dirt from the bottom all the way along once we're done. But we've got about sort of 70 metres to go now, all past our pile of fence posts, big blocks, and then we've got our metal and plastic down there, as you can see. Strong wind yesterday has blown all these from the top of there. So we've got a little bit of a tidy up to do, and then we'll crack on, firing the trench in all the way down here into the next field. And we're well over two thirds of the way there now. The trench, as you can see down here though, with all this crappy weather we're getting, we run into a, a bit of an issue in the low spot over here. It's starting to uh, fill up with water. And as you can see here, the low spot over by the drainage ditch, is all flooded. As you can see in there a little bit, the corner of this field, where the gateway is, pretty much floods every time we get these heavy rain. There's the old culvert pipe that connects this drain in here. You can just see it roughly in the gap in the, the brambles there. Had an old clay pipe in it which has collapsed. So yeah, I'm pretty sure in the next couple of months we're going to be digging out this whole thing connecting the two drainage channels together properly rather than with just an old clay pipe. So I'm going to head back under cover, get out the rain and begin making the mounts to put our solar panels on. Now for the mounts, all I'm going to do is build some 3x2 bracing to basically make a bit of a frame to support two panels. And I'm going to make 14 of those. And this is pretty much one edge of a frame. As you can see I've cut a 45 degree angle at the bottom there. So when the panels are sitting on this top edge, they'll be sitting at 45 degrees, so it favours the winter sun more than the summer sun because in the summer obviously you get way too much in the winter you don't really get enough so it's better to have your panels pointed towards where they're going to be in the lowest point of the year basically so here we go we've got the basic shape of one of the mounts up and running I'm just going to quickly go over to the panels put them on just actually make sure it, it works before we crack on with the other 13 so I've gone and put one of them together so you can see what the mount's going to look like and here we go so all that we're having to mount them on is literally just got the edge of the 3x2 frame that I was making over there sat on the edge of the solar panel and then the bottom and top edge will be sat on 3x2s need to put the middle one in here need to put the top one a bit further down and then basically just going to come along with some thin lath and mount a piece of lath that overlaps the top of the wood with this little piece of aluminium here which will lock the solar panels nicely in position on each of the mounts. Right then, let's crack on with the other 13. So 
So as you can probably hear, the wind's a bit high to be filming properly. So I've gone ahead and I've cut quite a few of these uh, 45 degree pieces that I need to cut and then just screwed them into a whole length of 2.4 with one on the bottom on through the top there. Dead easy to do, all I've done is literally let's go over the top of it as you can see that, cut the first piece off and I've used this as sort of a little bit of a jig to make the rest of the 45 pieces. Now I've also gone and finished a few more of the sides but I'm running out of wood now on the last piece so yeah same sort of structure as before just got this 1.5 meter length strap in those pieces I've just showed you together so in the shocking weather yesterday I've cut all of the frame pieces you can see lots of different length bits of wood around and we're all ready to take them down to the bottom field start screwing together the mounts Quickly finish the rest of these though. Just got 10 or so to go. These bits, got to connect them up and so complete the triangles. I'll do that quickly. Together. We started carrying over all the solar panels and all the bits. First job though, get this ground membrane, which is four meters wide, all the way to the little pegs I've got in over there, so we can put all of these mounts on this to stop the weeds growing through, so we don't have to maintain around the very edge of it, causing us one more thing to have to do. bits are down here now we've got the ground cover laid out so we won't have to deal with any weeds growing through and blocking the production of power from these panels but as you can hear the wind is ridiculous so I'm going to try and time-lapse this but I suspect the camera will probably blow over a few, a few times we'll see right then let's crack on putting these mounts together this up without having the sandbags ready to go straight on the ends. We're in danger of all this blowing away. And definitely put those panels on. These are going to end up tipping on the back or something which we don't want to happen. So yeah, till tomorrow. And it's a far better day today. So I've had a bit of a change of tactic. I've moved the last two mounts to this end rather than the far end as it raises up a little bit there. Let's keep it flat, I keep it at this end. And I've got some sandbags ready to go on the ends. I've brought the lath over. So let's begin. Let's start mounting all this up.
looks coming along nicely. Just started cutting the bits of lath to go on here. As you can see over there, the sun's just dropping behind that cloud, so it's going to be dark soon. So I'll probably end up finishing this under torchlight. So I got all the lath finished in the dark last night. Fortunately, our drill has a nice little LED light in it when you press the trigger. Stu's just finishing up the last few sandbags to go on now. And then we've got to run our cable. And I don't think I'm going to dig this area out because it's still a bit wet. So we'll probably just have an extra couple of feet of slack on it at this top end. And then uh, dig this at a later date in the next month or so. Right, let's go and pull the cable out. So I've gone and got the tractor involved for this bit. I've literally just looped a bit of rope around a pole through the middle. Jacked it up with a bucket. So we've got some nice free movement on the drum so I can pull this out. Now as this cable's fairly heavy and I've got a few bends in it, it's turning out to be a fair bit harder to pull through than I'd imagined. I need to pull on this as hard as I can. So yeah, let's crack on, let's get this pulled through. So we've got it all the way down here now. It took the two of us in the end because it got so heavy with the full weight of the cable out. Literally had to have Stu stand in the middle and I pulled the last bit, but we're there. So that's it for this video. Make sure to catch us in the next one if you're enjoying this series on our off-grid system so far, when we'll be plugging all this together and starting to wire things together in our power shed. Right then, until next time, bye bye.